Okay, so the last layer. Um, for the Mega Minx, unlike the 3x3, the 3x3, so many people are interested in the 3x3, that we've got the last layer down to an absolute science. We know all our PLLs. We know all our OLLs. We know this crazy COLL that, you know, does the corners and orients and, and permutes the corners. We've got um, ZBF2L, that, all, all that kind of weird, weird advanced uh, methods that, you know, do your last layer for you, basically. On the Mega Minx, really, we don't have any of that. We are stuck with a four-look, um, a four-look PLL. I don't know that anyone really knows a more advanced PLL than that. Um, I've noticed that on the unofficial World Records page, a lot of the really higher ups just say, "Yeah, I use a four-look OLL." So I'll explain this four-look OLL to you. The good thing is you don't have to learn any algorithms for this. I was toying around with a couple methods. Um, that I found on the internet, and I found between a few of them, I found a way of doing it with no algorithms whatsoever. Well, the only algorithms you have to know are soon and anti soon, really. So, the first thing we're going to do is the edges. We're going to orient the edges and then permute the edges. Then we're going to orient the corners and permute the corners. Orienting the edges is the same as orienting the edges on a 3x3. Three three. See that these two are unoriented. This is the same as the L on the 3x3. Three three. So it would be F, oops, U, R, U prime, R prime, F prime to get the star. This um, little arrowhead, when it's pointing to the right, it's the same as the bar. So it's going to be F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime to get the star. So orienting the edges is very easy. It's nothing new, and you know should have no problem with it whatsoever. Permuting the edges is a little bit different. We're still going to use edge switchers that cycle three pieces. So what we want to do is get two adjacent pieces that match. So if we have two adjacent pieces and we cycle around the other three, we'll get the five that we need. So what I'm doing right now is just uh, rotating the top layer around, seeing if I can get two that are adjacent that match, and I can't. So I'll just settle with one. And um, I'll cycle this red piece into here. So the edge cycles affect these three pieces. The two in the back, the two edges in the back, and the one on the right. These three. And I can tell that to get this red one over here, I need the clockwise edge cycle. Which is R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. Which you might notice is the anti-soon. Exactly the anti-soon. And you know you don't have to learn anything new, hopefully, for that. So we've got these two adjacent ones. We're going to rotate it so that they're in the safe zones or whatever you want to call them. And then we're going to cycle around these other three. So green needs to go up here. Uh, this needs to go there. This one's there. Uh, this is going to be anti soon again. The counterclockwise version of the edge switcher in this case would just be the soon, right? The anti soon is clockwise, and the soon is going to be counterclockwise, kind of backwards. But you know who cares? So this is clockwise. We need the anti soon. R, U2, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime. And all of our edges are permeated, which was easy. For the corners, it's a little, bit, a little bit different. We're not using algorithms. There are algorithms for the Mega Minx corners, but I didn't want to learn them, and I'm pretty sure no one else wants to learn a bunch of algorithms just so they can solve a Mega Minx. I mean, you got enough stuff you want to learn. You want to learn all your OLLs, you want to learn all your PLOs for the 3x3. And I'm, I'm just going to try to teach this with just commutators. So commutators are very short algorithms that, in certain situations, can be very useful. And for the Mega Minx, they work great. And these these commutators can actually be applied to the 3x3, although it is actually way too slow to actually want to use them. So um, for the corners, we're going to orient the corners first. And this is a this is a uh, commutator from blindfold solving, which is going to just twist the piece. Um, whatever direction you want. So I can see that this piece needs to be twisted clockwise and these two need to be twisted clockwise as well. To twist a piece clockwise it's going to be tilted on its side just like this. Make sure the piece is in this spot. Tilt it on its side and it's R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U. And you can see that this piece got twisted properly. Everything else is kind of messed up though. But don't worry about that just yet. Bring the next piece into the proper spot. It needs to go clockwise. R prime, U prime, R, U, 
r prime u prime r u. And now it's corrected, and bring the last piece in, r prime u prime r u, r prime u prime r u. The bottom fixes itself, always, if you do it right, and the top is all done. Oh, look at this nice little uh, last layer we got here. So now, for permeating in the corners, we're also going to use a commutator. A very useful commutator, by the way. Um, basically, all we're going to do is, is just uh, look at the piece that's in this spot, and memorize that it's purple and pink. And we'll do a R, D, R. Purple and pink. So we bring in the purple and pink, um, what should be the purple and pink corner. And we perform an R prime, D prime, R. Now, what did we just move out of the way? This um, pink and green. So we bring in the pink and green. Uh, what would be the pink and green corner? And we do an R prime, D, R. Fixes this. What do you bring into this layer? Green and orange. Bring in the green and orange spot. R prime, D prime, R. Fix this. What do you bring down here? Uh, orange and red. Bring in the orange and red slot. R prime, D, R. And this is red and purple. Bring in the red and purple. R prime, D prime, R. Very nicely done. Very easy commutator. And that'll get you your corners. So I don't think anyone should have any problem with the last layer on a Mega Minx. It's a little bit to get your head around at first, but the use of commutators is, you know, actually a pretty easy thing, and it's very useful um, if you know how to use commutators to your advantage, and it'll help you in blind solves as well. So that is how to solve a Mega Minx. Uh, quite a bit easier than you thought, I expect, and, um, you know, hopefully this will have helped you out and you can now solve a Mega Minx.